be with us and that you would put a word into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I don't know who's there. All right. <laughs> Amen. We're going to uh, worship together and take up this evening's offering. Amen. Think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he healed me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around and set my feet on solid ground. Oh, it makes me want to shout. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. When I think how he raised me and how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around and set my feet on solid ground. Oh, it makes me want to shout a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all. Worship you, Jesus. You're worthy of my praise tonight. All the honor and the glory belongs to you. King of kings and Lord of lords, I magnify your name right now. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. I worship you, Lord God. I give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you can be seated tonight. I'll just give you some announcements, and then I'll be out of your way. So corral practices are continuing every Tuesday until the Singspiration. On the 14th, we have the spring planning session for everyone who's on the leadership team. On the 15th, that's ministry mentoring. That's after prayer on Saturday. And then on the 16th is Father's Day, and we'll also be taking up the Apostolic Man offering. The 21st is hyphen and youth volleyball. If anyone is feeling able, come on out. And then the 23rd, we have Jonathan Bussey. And then on that evening, we have our Singspiration. That is everything. I will pass it off. I don't know who I'm passing it off to. I guess I'm in between here. Introduction. Yes. Sister Macy is going to come at this point, and she's going to bring us the word here tonight. Hot on fire from, from the ladies' retreat. And so... Boy, you're going to get it here tonight. God bless you, Sister Macy. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you don't know about all that. <laughs> um, well, I definitely would say, like, to comment on that, we definitely got fed at ladies' camp. A lot of really, really good stuff. And I especially loved one. I didn't prepare to say this, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But one I really enjoyed of her going into scriptures and the Bible, and I just, I love that. <laughs> if you've heard me enough times, you know I love to break things down. And so tonight actually won't be 
very much different from that. So, um, so my scripture that I'm going to be revisiting a few times in tonight uh, is Isaiah 26, and it'll be 1 through 6. So I'm not going to read it yet. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and, and pray. So, Pastor, if you'd pray. So the book of Isaiah, it contains a lot of prophecies. It's, it's prophecies about the judgment of Israel and of Judah and of its enemies. But he also prophesied about God's promises to be Israel's deliverer and to be their redeemer. And there's also a lot of prophecies about the Messiah and about the John, John the, the Baptist. So in this passage in Isaiah 26, it's basically, it's right in the middle of all of that. And Isaiah, he doesn't exactly say what, you know, what we're, say to what day he's referring to, but I, I think this scripture can be applied to us today. So we'll start with verse one. It says, in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. So I'm going to stop there for now and break down a couple of these words. So strong, strong means strong, okay. It means vehement or forceful. It means mighty, it means power. So we have a mighty city, a strong city. And I can't help but compare it to our church. So we have a strong and a powerful church. And the word city here is like a place guarded by a waking or by a watch, so when it says that in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah, they're rejoicing that they are a strong people with a strong city. So God is also saying that our church is strong. And our, our church is mighty in him. We have power in his spirit. We have a pastor. We have a ministry team. We have prayer warriors and leaders who watch and guard this city. So this city means a place guarded by waking Waking means awake, right? So not asleep. Our church doesn't have watchmen that are asleep. We don't have to worry about that. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that the people who, who pray in our church, who guard our leadership and our pastor, our intercessors, they're aware, they're spiritually sensitive, they're watching out. So moving on, it says that we have a strong city. God will appoint salvation and a point here means to place, to apply. It means to be stayed. So if something is stayed, it's fixed. It's not moving. It's not going anywhere. So salvation here means something saved. It means deliverance, and it means help. So God will appoint, place, apply, and stay. He will stay his salvation, his deliverance, and his help. So continuing on, it says, for walls and bulwarks. Walls means a wall of protection. A wall is meant for safety. We know what a wall is. But what is a bulwark? I did not know what a bulwark was. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're going to Google that one. <laughs> so when you look it up, it basically means it's a type of protection. It, it's, you kind of, it's broken down into an entrenchment or a trench. So a trench, you probably know what a trench is. It's basically a dug, narrow ditch. And a bulwark, it breaks down into the word rampart. And a rampart is also a military word. It's a defensive wall of a castle or of a walled city. So all of these things, a wall, a trench, a rampart, these are all for protection. So this applies to our body God's deliverance, God's help, God's protection is appointed, it is placed, it's applied, it is stayed, it is not moving. And he has been using us to put up walls. And we've been praying for God's protection. And we've been praying for other countries, other nations for protection. And he's been using us to dig a trench, to put up a rampart for pastors that are connected to us, for other churches, 
for other places. He's been using us. He's been using us at our prayer meetings on Wednesdays and Saturdays and before services. He's been using us to call for angels, to call for, for strength to these nations. So God has been leading Pastor Abbott to pray for different situations and encouraging us to bind together and pray, and it's all for a reason. We have a purpose. We're actually doing something when we do that. So moving on to verse 2 of Isaiah 26, it says, Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. And then verse 3, it says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So peace here is the word shalom. And shalom means safe, welfare. It means rest and at peace. So you will keep him in perfect peace and perfect rest and perfect welfare. Whose mind, which means like your frame of mind, your imagination, is stayed, which means propped, means leaned on. So whose mind is stayed, propped, leaned on, and then um, you here, it's saying God, because he trusts in you. Trust means to high, which is H-I-E. That was also a new one for me. And H-I-E, high, means refuge. It's Old English, and it means to hasten, to go quickly. So to go quickly, seek for refuge, to hasten for refuge, it also means to put my confidence in. So God is telling us to keep our mind on him, and he will bring peace. But how do we do that? Well, through prayer. When we pray and we keep our mind stayed on him, we're leaning on him. We're trusting in him quickly. We're going to him quickly. We're seeking him for safety and refuge. We're not waiting around. We're going immediately. We're putting our confidence in him, and he will keep us in perfect peace. It says keep means guard. Keep means to protect. And God is our protector. God is our peacekeeper and our way maker. And it truly isn't until you need a protector that you really recognize that he is a protector. It does take that a lot of times. It's not until you need peace <laughs> that you know God is the peacemaker. And it's not until you don't have anything and you give anyway that you know he's a provider when he gives it back to you. But we have to trust in him. Trust that he's guarding and he's protecting us. And trust that he will honor his word and bring us peace in the midst of the storm. But again, trust means to hide for refuge, to go quickly. So trust doesn't mean here, it doesn't mean to worry, to fret over situations that we face before we trust in him. Basically, don't wait around where you're like, okay, yeah, I think, but I don't know. I'm just going to see. I'm going to see how things, no, it means to go immediately, quickly to trust in him. So, for example, sometimes when you're, a lot of times you see it when you're driving, you're, you've got the hills, and, you're, and you see this storm, really bad storm is coming. It's all dry where you're at. But you look out and you see the rain, you're basically driving towards it, or you just see it coming towards you. And say you're outside, okay, and you see the rain is coming towards you. And imagine you have an umbrella. You know the rain's coming. You know that it's going to rain on you. Do you wait till you feel the first drop to pull up your umbrella? Or do you wait to look for shelter? Like, oh, I think maybe there might be somewhere around here I could hide under, but I'll just wait. No, you don't wait because you're going to get soaking wet. You quickly put your umbrella up. You start to look for shelter if you're not at home. Because you know if you don't, you're going to get wet. You must trust quickly, but that's not always easy for us to do. When we're faced with a trial, we can't be knocked off balance for so long that we start listening to the enemy and allowing him to plant seeds of doubt and of fear. So his word says to trust the Lord quickly, seek refuge in him, and he will keep us. He will guard us. He will bring peace. Keeping our minds stayed, leaning on the Lord through effectual and fervent prayer. 
that is our part in the scripture, and God always delivers on his promises, so you don't have to worry. He will bring peace. So let's turn to Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So trust is, again, high for refuge and put confidence in the Lord with all your hearts. Your heart means it's your inner man, it's your mind, and lean or rely not on your own understanding or knowledge. Again, God is telling us to trust and put our confidence in him quickly and that we, sh we should not rely on our own selves and our own knowledge of the situations that we face. We can only see what's in front of us, but the great thing is God's vantage point is infinite. He sees the end from the beginning. He knows every storm and every trial that he's going to send us into and he's going to allow us to go through. As we've heard about, God knows where he's taking us. He knows what the purpose of the trial is. He knows how it's going to create and mold us and shape us. And if we lean on our own understanding, we aren't trusting in God. We aren't letting him do a work in our lives. So we aren't putting our confidence in him, and we are opening the door to fear. And when we do that, we're allowing a breach in our wall. So I want to go back to Isaiah 26 and 3. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So who, who is the him in this situation? So going back to verse 2, open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Nation here basically breaks down to mean a foreign nation. And a Gentile is a foreign nation. It's, it's somewhat of a foreign nation to the land of, of Judah. So unless you're Jewish in here, we're all Gentiles. We're all foreign. We're a foreign nation in the scripture. So we're, if we're all Gentiles and we keep the truth, this scripture says to open the gates for them. So what does it mean by keep the truth? Well, keep means to hedge about. To guard, it means watchmen. So truth means established, so we must guard what is established. Hedge about the truth and be a watchman for the truth. So I've, I, before coming here, I knew kind of what a hedge looked like, but there's a few neighborhoods around that I've walked around that I've, we've driven around, and I've seen like these little baby, I call them Christmas trees because we don't have them in Texas, but they're little, you know, they're fir trees, evergreen, whatever. Um, but people have them set up as like fences. Of course, they're not doing any good as little bitty trees. But I understand the point is for them to grow and become basically, I'm guessing this is what they're for, an enclosement, like a fence around their house. And they're a lot cuter than regular hedges, in my opinion. But when they're little, like I said, they don't do a lot, except for look cute. But obviously, we know that they're going to get very tall, and they're going to act as fences. So Job, Job 1 and 10 says, Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. So the, fed, the hedge that is talking about here, it means a fence or a shut-in for protection. So without God's permission, basically, Satan could not penetrate the hedge that was surrounding Job. So a hedge is protection from the enemy. We know that. We must protect the truth that God has established. And you don't fence things in that aren't valuable to you. You don't fence things in that you don't want, you don't really care about. It's there for a purpose. You want to protect them from people who would try to steal from you. So the truth is invaluable. It's priceless. There's no price that you can put on the truth. And we can't allow the enemy to take the truth from us. So let's turn to Fro Proverbs 23 and 23. It says, buy the truth and do not sell it. Also, wisdom, instruction, and understanding. So buy means procure. Procure the truth. Do not sell it. Sell means surrender. Do not surrender the truth. We have to love this truth and never surrender it. I can't. I can't imagine ever surrendering this truth. 
And I pray to God that I never, ever allow even just the smallest breach to take me off the course that God has set for me. It's not worth it. We have to love the Lord to love the truth. John 14 and 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the truth. If the Bible calls itself the word of truth, and we know the word is God, we know that God is truth. We have to live this life for him because we love him more than anything, and we and never want to surrender the truth to the enemy in our lives. So I want to go back to Isaiah 26, and then going to verse 4, it says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. So this is the same trust that we've been talking about. Trust to go quickly to refuge, to put confidence quickly. Trust in the Lord forever. So forever is eternity, is perpetual, is without end. So we're putting our confidence in the Lord forever. We are quickly seeking him and we're trusting in him, never ending trust in God forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. So strength here, it doesn't just mean strong, just in the, in the sense that we understand it. It also means a cliff or a rock. But it figuratively, it means refuge. It means everlasting strength. So the Lord is everlasting strength, everlasting refuge. Everlasting means what we, what kind of what we expect it to mean. It's always an eternity of old and perpetual. So something really stood out to me here that the Strong's Concordance also says that it properly means concealed. So it also means the vanishing point. Generally, time out of mind, past or future. I got a little bit confused looking into all of this. <laughs> It's, 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 it is a little bit confusing whenever you first read it. Vanishing point. How is this concealing? Vanishing point. Like, where did I turn? So time, so time out of mind means something so long ago, so far away, that we have no knowledge of it. It's his refuge, his strength, his safety, we must see quickly, is everlasting. That's how everlasting it is. It means it's always been always been we can't wrap our minds around that but it's always been and it always will be he's so good and for him to speak to us the way that he does to reach down to touch us the way that he does and to speak to us individually I'm so thankful that he does I'm so thankful he cares for each of us individually that he cares for me to come to this earth, to take on flesh, to die for us, just so that we have the opportunity that we don't deserve, but that we have to live in eternity with him, an eternity that we can't even wrap our minds around or understand. But at some point, our vision is concealed. We can't see it. So my last scripture is Deuteronomy 32 and 4. It says, he is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. So our city, our church is strong and mighty in the Lord. There is salvation and deliverance in God's defenses. Every one of us must hedge the truth in our lives. We have to make a decision, each of us, to hedge the truth. We must love the Lord and be a watchman for truth. We must protect our relationship with God through prayer. God brings peace if we lean on him in prayer and we keep our eyes and our thoughts on him. If we trust in him and his ways, he will bring peace. Strength, refuge, safety is in him and it's in him. It's him and it's in him. Everlasting. He does not fail. He never lost the battle. And I stand here in the face of the enemy and I tell him he did not win. He has not won. He tried. He tried really hard, but he hasn't won. I'm so thankful 
for God because he brought me out of darkness into the light. And he never loses the battle. It's not my strength or, my, or anything that I've done, but it's God. He's worked through me in every situation. So if you would stand with me, I just want to take a time, the time to thank God for that. Thank him for truth. Thank him for being our refuge, for being a place of safety. Thank you, God, for being my refuge. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God, let this be a reminder of us to go with you, God, into this week and be a reminder to go quickly to you, oh God. God, help us to remember to go quickly to safety and refuge, to lean upon your word. Your word is perfect. God, we find your truth in your word. God, in your Bible, help us to fall in love with your word, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go with us this week, God, and we would lean upon you. Put our confidence in you, Jesus. We trust in you, Jesus.